Joining the show today is one of us by way of 75th overall pick in the 2019 NHL draft by your Minnesota Wild, Adam Beckman. How are we doing, Adam? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. How about you guys? Good, good. And uh, I know Joe mentioned before we even jumped on here, the beautiful, unorthodox weather that we have here for March in Minnesota. So appreciate you taking the time. Um, Going to start with a weirder one that we've been opening with for all of our interview guests. Uh, Rorschach test. When you look at the Minnesota Wild logo, what do you see? Yeah, it's so funny. This this took me like literally the day I got drafted here and like, or maybe the day I came to development camp to find out that it's a bear. But <laughs> the whole time, my whole life, I, I mean, there's even like where I grew up, there's like minor hockey teams called the wild. They're different colors, but it's the same logo. And I thought it was like a UFO for the longest time. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I know there's some like exhibition rides like that. I used to, when I used to go in it, like it was spun and it for some reason it looks like a saucer that I don't know. It just, to me, it looked like a, a UFO or something like that. So I always thought that literally until like the day I was at development camp and somebody pointed out on a wall that it's a head, right? And I had I had absolutely no idea. <laughs> oh man. UFO is the best answer we've gotten so far. So that's it, good. Yeah. You are in a way the best answer. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you'd love to hear too. Last week when we talked to Declan Chisholm about it, he only saw the bear. He didn't see anything besides the bear. So that's like it, it's all over the map, man. But yeah, yeah UFO top answer so far. <laughs> it was like the it looks like it's the sun with the the yellow. I don't know. I saw what it is. <laughs> it's hard to miss it when you walk in the the room or the tra- or the uh, the lounge and there's like the big huge logo on the wall, right? If it's on yeah, the once thing you, on your sweater, you know, once it's you see, to see it, you can't unsee it. I think <laughs> like once you see that it's the bear with, you know, the trees and the river and oh, the wild, I guess, just that type of thing. It's hard to unsee it, but like until I was told it, I, I had no idea. You mentioned uh, growing up and having some wild teams there. Like, uh, obviously do you have a rink behind your house? Like I know your dad got you on the ice, right? When you were like three or four, like how did that, how did you get started? And I'm sure a game that everybody plays in Saskatoon. Yeah. So uh, growing up, like, um, you know, I live like literally, two houses down from my elementary school and 10 houses down from my high school. But behind my elementary school, there's one of the, you know, like the nicest outdoor rinks in the city. Like um, there's a a group of guys that have taken care of it forever. And they they ended up getting a Zamboni like a little bit into my time, but like, so an awesome outdoor rink. So I spent, you know, a ton of time out there, but um, you know, I think when I was like probably seven or eight, we started flooding one in my backyard so, you know, from whether it's, you know, probably the beginning of November till, you know, this time, um, mm-hmm. usually there would be an outdoor rink in the backyard that, you know, I'd go out to whether, you know, at least every single day for, you know, a little bit of time at least. So I think that's, you know, where I developed a lot of, you know, my skill and stuff like that. And you siblings both played, right? Your sister and your, your brother. Yeah. Played. So I had two older siblings. Um, my sister played, uh, you know, made a triple A. Um, my brother played a little bit. He, he didn't play at a super high level, but, uh, he played quite a bit as well. So I kind of grew up just obviously, you know, my brother's four years older than me and my sister's six. So <clears throat> my brother's, you know, age buddies were always like kind of my idols or whatever. Right. So I'd be playing, you know, four years up all the time, whether it's in the backyard or, or whatever. So I think that's where I, I learned a lot as well. So like a lot of like daily, like big pickup games out there like did you have always have the weekend would have the biggest like pickup yeah so, so when uh like i said my backyard so it's it's called the spore court and we i think we put it in when i was nine or ten so basically uh, i don't know if you guys are familiar with it but it's like these tiles that um pretty much are just compatible with like you know a lot of things but we obviously used it for hockey and we put a you know hockey net out there and um, your stick slides on it, puck slide on it, good. So we would play, um, you know, pick up hockey all the time, whether it was my brother's friends coming home from school at lunchtime or, um, you know, just any time, you know, in the evenings or in the summertime. And then obviously in the wintertime, it was flooded to a rink. So I was pretty lucky. We ask everybody, I guess, like, it's you grew up in Canada, I grew up in these towns, and you love the game of hockey and it's your dream. Like, when did you realize, hey, I might have, like, a future in this? When When is it? where it became more or less more of a not say a job, but maybe became more of like, Hey, I can 
take this to the next level? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously when you're young, everybody's got the dream of it, right? Like you're playing hockey and whether it's the outdoor rink and you're, you know, pretending you're Sidney Crosby or whoever it is, you're, you have that dream of, you know, playing in the NHL. And I think that, um, you know, I was always, you know, a pretty, like pretty good minor hockey player in, uh, in my city. So obviously just like continuing to try and get better. But I honestly, like, I don't think that, you know, you ever really realize it till like probably my, my first year junior, when you start talking to NHL teams and um, you start kind of realizing that, you know, you might have a chance at getting drafted and then, you know, from there playing in the NHL. But I think that, um, you know, it's always your dream, but I think that it didn't really become, something that I, you know, really thought was possible just because, you know, there's not a lot of people. I mean, there's a ton of people that play hockey, but not a lot of people that, you know, get to reach the, the highest level. So probably when I started talking to NHL teams, yeah. Who are the yeah. idols you looked up to? Like, who are the guys, who are the posters on your wall in your room, for example? Like, who is, who is yeah. up there? Uh, Sidney Crosby was a big one for me, obviously. I'd, um, just, you know, with his, um, just during the time I was growing up, he was just, you know, unbelievable, right? And um, dominating in kind of every aspect of the game. And um, so I think I always had, uh, I mean, he was always a big idol of mine. I think uh, kind of one that probably people wouldn't necessarily, or would be a little bit surprised is Jordan Everly. I think that, um, you know, growing up in Western Canada and obviously with the World Juniors and stuff, that was still kind of, you know, when I was, you know, probably 10 or 11 or maybe 9 or 10. And obviously Everly was just dominating the World Juniors. And then he played, uh, Western Hawk in the Western Hockey League, probably it's about two hours away from where I am. So, you know, they would come play Saskatoon. And um, so I'd see him. And then obviously when he went to the NHL, Edmonton's the closest team to where I come from. So he was actually probably one of my bigger idols as well. Nice. And you talked about some of your junior experience there going to Spokane. I've gotten a lot of mixed reviews. Like, People absolutely dog the city. There's other people that say it's a hidden gem. Like, what was your thoughts on your time there? I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I'd say it's a hidden gem for sure. I think that um, the weather there is awesome. Like, the, the summertime is unbelievable. There's tons of lakes nearby. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, but... Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like 40 minutes up the, the interstate, and it's beautiful. Spokane, the <laughs> city is awesome. Like... Um, like it's got everything it's it's kind of uh it's kind of an older downtown but it's like really pretty there's a river that comes through and the the fans are are unbelievable the rink's unbelievable um yeah i, I don't know I, i've never actually that's funny you say people with mixed reviews i've never actually heard anything too bad about it but i loved it like i, I was like i said the weather was great the fans are great restaurants and food's good so uh it was awesome my time there for sure Thank you remember them favorite go ahead scott no, no, you're good. Do you have a favorite memory in the WHL at all? Like favorite game or like moment that you uh, uh, had during that run you guys had? Yeah, I think uh, my first year uh, we were in uh, the the playoffs. We made the playoffs my first year there. I was 17. And uh, I think we were the maybe the third seed in our division. And we played against Portland. Portland had a really good team with um, – just tons of guys like Joel Hofer was on that team. I don't know the goalie for St. Louis, Cody Glass, um, Seth Jarvis. Um, they, they had a really good team, and we uh, we were good as well. Like, and uh, we I think we, we were playing them in the, in it was I think it was game four, and it was we were up two one in the series. We were playing in Portland, um, awesome atmosphere, and it went to overtime. So it was you know I think it was a pivotal game, and I was fortunate enough to score the overtime winner that game. And I think that um, just that that kind of that feeling was like it was so cool. I think that that was like one of the bigger moments up to that that time in my career. Just you know being in a you know almost a sellout massive building that they they play out of and um, scoring a, an overtime winner was was really cool there. I think. And 2019 2020 was obviously a great season for you, with Spokane. Uh, never a slouch in your time there, but was this more just hey? cutting your teeth, working your way up the lineup, or was there something that changed going into that season where like something all of a sudden clicked? Uh, you know, I think that a, a big part of it was just the confidence level. Obviously coming into your first year, you don't really know what to expect. Um, and then, you know, getting drafted and just, 
um, you know, spending some time here at development camp and then, you know, main camp and coming back. And obviously your role is a little bit elevated as you, you know, you turn 18 now. And uh, yeah, I think that just, you know, that confidence and um, really just understanding the league, I think was a big thing as well. Um, and then obviously with my, our team was really good that year. Like, I think that was the year that got cut, sh- sh- shut down uh, due to COVID. But like we were, we were like dominating the league and in our division that year. And uh, I think that just, you know, with the line mates and, and just our, our defensive core and, and everything, it just kind of all clicked for myself at least. And I, I just felt, you know, like I was, you know, really coming into my own. You you brought up the, the draft. I talked to your parents last year and they brought up the story about deciding whether to go to the draft. And do you remember how that was decided and, um, and why was why was even a discussion whether you wanted to go or, or not? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, it, yeah, we were definitely contemplating, and I think just because um, you know, I think the biggest thing is you hear stories about people that like, God forbid, something happens where you go and you don't get drafted, and and you sit there the whole time or or whatever. And obviously, I you know I felt pretty confident about myself getting drafted, and uh, but you just you just truly never know. And I think that, you know, we contemplated it for a long time. Uh, And then being that it was, it was pretty close. It was in Vancouver that year. So we got there and I I mean, looking back on it, it's probably one of the the better decisions we've made in in a time like that, because the, the memories I think that um, come from that are are unbelievable. It's a, it's, I mean, I think that it's kind of a, obviously it's not a huge part of your career considering, you know, not, it doesn't really matter when you get drafted, but I think just being there was just so cool and having the chance to experience it with my family is really cool too. And your dad flipped the coin. Is that how you, so how did that moment happen where you came into the room and just said, Hey, this is we'll let fate decide whether we do it. Yeah. That's kind of what happened. Like we were, like I said, we were contemplating my mom and I always him and haw and everything. Like it's kind of our personality trait when they're you know, making decisions and stuff like that. And he was finally just like, all right, well, we got to decide, so kind of 50-50 type thing, and, and that's that's how it went. So it worked out good. That's awesome. And when you were at the draft then, like, did you have an idea of where you were going to go? Like you said, it doesn't matter when you get drafted, but were you expecting to go sooner, later? Was it a big surprise? Um, you know, again, I think you truly never know, but I think for me, I kind of knew I was in that um, – I felt like I was going to be in the second or third round range. Um I think that you know the draft's unique because you you play against players that get drafted or you don't know guys that are getting drafted and you're kind of just sitting there thinking oh well you know maybe I I feel like I'm better than that player or whatever it is but at the end of the day it's the team's you know preference and what they like in a player so you can't really look too far into it and I think that obviously it's stressful just because you're sitting there and you're obviously contemplating and thinking about what you know the worst case scenario is but once you finally hear your name it's like it was just the best feeling and you just feel so happy and you know excited to kind of like put that behind you and get to work i think what do you remember the most about your nhl debut like that just that day and just i know your parents were there but like it was denver right i think what was your what was that day and like hours leading up to it like yeah um obviously i think i remember looking around like just into the crowd and obviously you know the atmosphere in that arena is unbelievable obviously you're playing against you know mckinnon and and ranson and all these guys i think they ended up winning the stanley cup that year if i'm thinking back correctly so they were a really good team but you know the atmosphere in there was unbelievable and you know i remember i was sitting on the bench just during the national anthem and it was connor Dewar at the time he he was only probably you know i think three or four games into his career at the time and he just kind of looked at me and kind of said, you know, you're here type thing. And I think that that was really cool, right? Like you dream about that moment for, for so long. And it's almost a little bit surreal in the sense that like, you know, you thought about it so much and then for it to happen, it's really cool. But it just kind of gives you a, a taste of it and makes you kind of want it more and more, I think. And talk to us about just being a prospect, right? Like in, in the purest sense, like, you've got to be pretty well acquainted with uh, 35W at this point. Yeah. What What is it like kind of bouncing back and forth, having to adapt roles, you know, being top six down with Iowa, shifting to playing a bottom six role in Minnesota? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, especially when you're young, you can 
there's a lot of you know you're doing a lot of travel and you know whatever you don't know exactly if you're hopping on a flight the next day or whatever it is but i always say it when you know i'm talking to just take it day by day i think is the biggest thing i think that you know if you're down there you got to be you know working to get better and 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 working on your craft or like you said whether or not you're playing in the top six or whatever it is or or what your your role is you just want to get better whether it's at practice or or during the games um i think that we all kind of know our strengths and weaknesses as a player and uh you know what we need to develop and then obviously you get the opportunity to come up here you want to just try and make an impact but help the team i think is the, the biggest thing obviously you know right now um you know it's kind of crunch time and um you know the team's playing some pretty meaningful games so you know if you get an opportunity to play you want to try and just contribute to the, as the best you can so i think at the end of the day it's 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 day by day and just trying to focus as much as you can on getting better because that's kind of all you can do. Mm-hmm. Is it a little more stressful, like in your first ex- experiences with it, when you're younger, in terms of like, like waiting for a call up or seeing somebody else called up, or just getting anxious about it? Versus maybe now you have a little more experience with it being up and down. In terms of maybe was would things stress you out maybe more a little earlier on a couple of years ago versus like kind of right now going through it? Yeah, I think uh, obviously, yeah, I think as you mature, like in the you know two and three quarters or three years of pro hockey, yeah. I've played, I think that I've matured a lot on just like th- the mental aspect of that and not reading into that stuff and not worrying about that because, I mean, it, again, it doesn't really get you anywhere. Um, I think, um, you know, the biggest thing that's, I think the biggest difference is when you're young, like when I was young and you get called up, you're obviously really nervous and like obviously nervous about playing, but just nervous about, you know, being in the locker room, right? And uh, the atmosphere, I think it's just, um, you know, now being where I am, I think you're a lot more comfortable. Um, obviously, at that time, too, the group was, was awesome and making you feel comfortable. But I think, you know, just that confidence in yourself as well as the atmosphere in the room really helps, um, you know, make you feel better. Because I think at the end of the day, it is it is hockey. And, you know, at this level, we're all, you know, kind of know how to play the game. But that being said, I think just like making yourself feel comfortable and confidence, um, the biggest thing. Uh, Last year at the uh, the X, you did score a goal at home. <laughs> uh, I know there was an offside challenge uh, there. What was that moment like when the goal went in initially? The kind of that overall feeling. I know I'm sure it was it was tough to see it taken away, but that that whole moment, the whole place went nuts and everything like that. Just what was that? Yeah, that moment like <laughs> I would say it's a really cool feeling. I think that um, you know. When you think you scored, you know, you obviously it's kind of a, a big adrenaline rush. I think that I th- you you obviously dream of that, right? Like like I said, that's kind of one of those moments you dream about as a kid. Um, but and then obviously it gets taken away, and that's just you know the way it goes sometimes. I think that um, it happens so much. You know, now I think you, you just watch hockey games. It seems like there's one coming back once every two games or, or whatever it is. But um, I think you know just that feeling kind of gives you the the hunger or the, you know, or, or the the drive to try and, you know, make it happen, I guess, again, for real. Did, uh, did Ryan Hartman like take you to dinner after that? Or did he do anything like say, sorry, kid, or like anything that, you know, I think he was the guy that was offside on that play. I believe it was him. Yeah, he, uh, he, he did. He just, uh, he, he obviously like, again, that's, that's hockey. I think he said it actually happened to him too when, uh, you know, he was, you know, beginning his career, but he obviously was just like, what are you going to do? I think he ended up scoring like, <laughs> The next two goals and scoring the game winner so i think he uh he made up for it so yeah that definitely helps yeah <laughs> talk to me back to iowa what's it like playing for tim army versus playing for brett mclean yeah um i think obviously you know both are um obviously really good coaches um you know coming in when i was young i think that it was was kind of like not a shock but it was just like this is pro hockey right like it's intense and uh you just it's it was rigorous right like they they put you through you know you know tons of practices lots of video and i think it was really good for me because it kind of just like instilled a lot of you know different things into my game that i feel like um you know to this day i still think about right like you you become super aware of the the way you're playing like so to speak like you you, um i don't know if the word is analyzed but like just 
um, critique your own game, right? Like you're like, okay, I, I got to do these things, right? Like these little things, like, you know, they're not worried. Like you score this and that, but they're also worried about, you know, you're making that play on the wall or you making sure you're making the right decision, stuff like that. And it was, you know, I think my first two years, it was, it was really like, uh, not so much my second year, but my first year was a little bit of a rude awakening coming into pro, right? Like you gotta, you gotta really, um, worry about those things and like, you know, at, like change those things in your game, because if you want to play at the, the next level, you got to be tight in all areas. So I think it was really good for me to just learn that, that style of game. And then obviously with, with Mac down there now, um, it's really good. It's, it's super positive as well. And, you know, I think we're continuing to work through the kinks in my game. I think that obviously um, just trying to bring it every day is the, you know, the big thing from both coaches is just trying to be consistent with that, um, you know, I'd bring it like we're at practice, we're going to try and work and we're going to get better. Right. Um, and I think that that's the value that both of them have kind of instilled in me. Um, but yeah, with Mac now, I think it's just that, you know, bringing that energy and, and positivity in terms of, you know, we want to have fun, but we want to, you know, get down to work too. So, um, yeah. For sure. And I have to get you to either confirm or deny a story here. It's something that's actually grown into a big bit on another one of our podcasts, uh, Judd's Buds, where we talk wild prospects and NHL draft eligibles. Yeah. A couple summers back, Russo has Tim Army on his podcast and asked him, hey, what do you, what do you tell a guy like uh, Beckman to do over the summer? And his answer was told him to go shoot pucks in his driveway. Yeah. Um, I think that it, that, that happened like, when I had my exit meeting uh, after my first year, I uh, I think I had like like it was something insane. It was like two hundred and and some shots for the for the year, and it was like amongst the like top five in the league for for shots on goal. But I had like like ten or eleven goals, which is obviously not a great shooting percentage. So <laughs> yeah, we we talked. I remember we talked, and he just said, "Listen, like you're getting the looks, like." um obviously you know you've you've had a you've got a really good shot like I, I think that I've always worked on my shot right I've I've had a really good shot um you know kind of throughout my life but it's more so now it's like okay you gotta figure out ways to to get it off and be accurate with it when you're getting it off quick or, or whatever and uh so like I said we have that that thing in my backyard and I put a big emphasis on just like making my release different or, or quicker and putting it in spots quick and um I think to this day, like I still, I'm trying to work on that. Right. Like, I think that that's a big thing for me is, you know, when you get the opportunity, you're not going to get as many, um, you know, at this level. So you've got to try and make the most of it if you do. But yeah, it was kind of just like, it wasn't so much like you need to be shooting, but it's like how you're shooting. Right. Like you need to work on your release and stuff like that. And I think it really helped me because I spent a lot of time that summer just working in different areas. And then I think I took a step the next season. What's the uh, biggest adjustment? Like you've been a goal scorer your whole life, and like at the NHL, obviously we know it's faster and guys are stronger. But like, what's been the biggest thing you've learned in trying to be, you know, productive at at this level in terms of why it's kind of a challenge for a lot of guys, not just yourself, but a lot of guys who come up and have that go from the AHL to NHL and try to see if they can have that kind of production. Yeah, I think you know a lot of it is um, maybe just like not so much confidence, but like experience, right? Like, I think, you know, once you kind of start to get it in a groove, I think at any level, like once you start to feel comfortable and, you know, feel like you can do it, I think it's, is a big thing. But um, yeah, I think that just getting the looks, right? Like you're going to get less and less looks when um, the defensemen are, you know, twice as fast or their sticks are way better, right? Like you got to make the most of your opportunity and try and um, just put yourself in the best position because, I think the biggest difference between the American League and, and the NHL in terms of like skill set is just like little things like sticks, right? Like, you know, in the American League, you might be able to, you know, shoot through a defenseman screen or, or whatever. But a lot of times, you know, these guys give you it and then they put their stick on it late. Like, it's uh, it's you know, in the American League, a lot of guys are learning. Whereas here, it's like guys are kind of more masters of their skill, right? So just trying to. Um, you know, again, learn the little things, but I think for me, a big thing is trying to get the puck off quick and put it in the spot that I, I need to put it. Nice. I was, uh, I was curious, like, you know, a veteran player can go like 20 games without a goal and he's still in the lineup and he's still getting chances and he's still going to be able to, 
you know, go back out there when you're a prospect and you, you're maybe up for injury purposes or whatever, you might have two or three games or whatever. It's not a long runway, I guess, of, of chances to do that. You mentioned getting looks like, is there like, what is that feeling as a prospect of, you know, you probably have a few games while guys coming back from an injury or like, I don't know if there's more pressure or if there's more like you, you want to make an impact every single shift you're out there no matter what, but like, what is that kind of feeling like, you know, uh, you're not gonna be able to score every game. Of course, that's not the way the world works, but yeah, is there a certain feeling about that. Um, I mean, a little bit. I think, obviously, for any player, the, the biggest thing you want to do is produce, right? Like, especially for an offensive player, you want to produce at this level. So, obviously, you come in and when you say you want to make an impact, that's, you know, a big part of it, right? You want to make an impact, um, help the team win. And by doing that, you got to obviously, you know, make the right plays at the blue lines and, um, you know, protect the buck. But you also got to produce. So, I think that there is a little bit of pressure on that. But I think at the same time... Um, you can't force it right like stuff like that just kind of happens like obviously you know i've played at um a lot i've played a lot of hockey in my life and i know that you know if you're playing the right way you know good things tend to happen so i think that for me it's just try to play the right way and you know hope like you say good things happen and and you know hopefully happen sooner rather than later i guess for sure another uh, nhl trade deadline has come and gone and uh by way of pat maroon heading out of the organization. We got a former Spokane teammate of yours, Luke Toporowski, which maybe I butchered that last name. Who knows? <laughs> that was actually correct. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Here we go. Uh, coming to join the team. Curious what you can tell us just about Luke as a player and as a person, but also any like advice you gave him, like whether it's about the organization or best spots to grab beer in Des Moines, go wherever you want with it. Yeah. So Luke's actually one of my really good buddies from, from junior. So we're the same age and uh, we, my whole time I was there, he was, he was there. So it's actually really, uh, when I found out, I was like, kind of like, I almost was laughing. Like it didn't feel kind of real because it was just, it's just, it's a little bit weird. Cause I just didn't expect that. So I'm super excited. Obviously uh, he's doing really well to, to start in Iowa right now. And he's a, he's a really good player. Like he's, He's really he's really fast and like strong. He's pretty tenacious too. Um, he's got a really good skill set. Um, he's actually from the Quad Cities. He played a ton of minor hockey in Chicago, so he's you know really familiar with I think um, you know the Midwest. And then obviously uh, being in Iowa, um, I think it'll be it's really cool because you know he's I'm talk I've been talking to him. I talked to him before as well, like all the time. And then obviously now that he's in Iowa, just kind of helping him out in terms of like. Like you said, where to where to eat, where to where he's living, you know where he's at. And actually, um, a little tip: it his brother is uh, the assistant coach of the Des Moines Buccaneers. So, um, so his brother's there in the in the town right now as well. So, I think it's uh, you know it was a pretty good move for him in terms of just you know the proximity to you know where he grew up as well as you know his brother's living there right now. So, um, super excited for him, and you know super excited to kind of be on the journey with him as well. Nice. As of uh, this taping, uh, Kusadinov will go on his first NHL road trip this weekend. And for somebody who's been on in the minors and obviously in the NHL, do you have any what are your favorite perks about NHL life, NHL travel? Like the, the biggest differences you see both in in travel and in the at the X, right? Like the lounge and all that stuff like that that people don't get to see. Yeah, obviously, I think. The, the TRIA facility and, and then the X facility is obviously second to none. Like, it's unbelievable. Just the meals, the the chefs there do an unbelievable job of, you know, t taking care of your needs. and But just the entire training staff, it's obviously, it's really good. It's unbelievable in Iowa as well. I think that, um, you know, the training staff down there does an unbelievable job of taking care of the, the boys. And obviously up here, it's just, you know, bigger facility, right? Like, there's just more and more for you to be able to, you know access but i think the biggest thing and the difference is the travel and just you know instead of hopping on a bus to grand rapids for seven and a half hours or you fly you know you're flying to the west coast but you're you know making a couple connecting flights it's it's a lot different than hopping on a, a private plane and you know being there in a couple hours so um like you said like i said earlier i think that you know there's a ton of, you know, perks of playing in here. And I think that that's what just gives you the more of the, 
the drive to you know want to stay here and obviously i'm not entirely sure what the khl is like in terms of you know accommodations like that but i'm sure he's you know pretty excited about um you know like you said the road trip and and just being here because you know obviously i'm sit, sit beside him and um in uh, at the tria the last couple of days and you know he's an awesome kid so he seems like he's having a good time so excited for him you you probably learned pretty quickly that it's called a never hungry league nhl on the, in the airplanes by tell how much food that they give you on there like your favorite <laughs> snacks favorite yeah, snacks they, you pick up on the way you know or, yeah that's what they call it the never hungry league but you know when you're uh, in a guy like me i think it just makes you more hungry to try and like you said stay there and, and make it an opportunity to you know make a career out of it i think I think we have um are you what do you do off the ice are you uh you go back home do you like you fish do you uh, obviously golfing is i think every hockey player i don't think i've met a hockey player very few maybe Kirill said he's still figuring out golf but very few <laughs> don't golf so like what are your go-to off the ice things yeah golf's obviously a big one i'm actually not very, like not good at all but i love it like it's just such a, a nice thing to do when you finish working out or skating or whatever you kind of keep that same you know hanging out with your buddies that um that you're with during the gym or, or whatever even if it's your buddies that don't play hockey i think that it's just such a good sport to kind of just um kind of chill but you know be competitive um but yeah like i i always people always ask me it's like i never i don't play video games i like to read a bit um i i'm a big like like i like conversation going out for coffee and just like hanging out with guys. I think that's something that in Iowa we do quite a bit. It's just like, um, like I said, going out for coffee and stuff like that because, um, you know, the days can get long if you're not playing video games or you're not um, being able to golf, I guess. Nice. Well, let's, let's wrap on that then. Um, our final question here, the waggle golf question, get your waggle on dot com promo code SP 10 for 10 percent off. If you were to assemble your dream golf foursome to be a part of, I need to lay that caveat out because we've had two people already write themselves out of their own golf foursome. Um, <laughs> who would be in that group and uh, bonus points if you've got a, a course that you'd want to play to? So when you say that it, like it can be anybody? Anyone anybody. you can conjure. Oof. Not, not hockey player. It could be golfers. It could be dead or alive. It could be whatever you know. you can – Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying mom, dad, and brother would probably not be the greatest answer. <laughs> that's what you're about. Go go that <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, I think you have to put Tiger Woods in there. Like, mm -hmm. no way fans are bots. I'm probably gonna put uh, Roger Federer in there. Um, and who would my third be? Jeez. Um, Go Michael Phelps and I'd go Augusta. Oh, okay. Okay. Who are you sharing? My, I mean, I pretty much think it's just like the best three athletes of all time, but <laughs> there you go. High, high level. Yeah. Who, yeah. who are you riding the, the cart with then? I'm probably riding the cart with Tiger. Hopefully, get some swing tips. <laughs> <laughs> Good answers. Good answers across the board. Right on. I think I think you uh, you hit on the head when you said I'm not good, but I like it. I think you're one of us in that respect too. I think all of us are like not good at golf, but really enjoy going out there. Yeah. You know? So I think it's uh, almost a humbling experience, but a fun experience. No exactly. Doubt. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. <sighs> it. It puts you in the realistic minority too, because most people will tell you that they're good when really they're just not. Yeah. And like a couple guys on each team that are a stick. Like obviously we've seen what Boldy does in the off season, but. Yeah. More often than not, you've got guys like, oh, yeah, I'm a really good golfer. And it's like, oh, <laughs> no, yeah, you, you see no, not really. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I think that I think golf is like one of the funniest sports in terms of like analyzing your game because you can't truly see if a guy's a good golfer until you play with him. Like I, <laughs> I know guys that were liable or it's like, oh, yeah, I shot whatever. I shot 78 today, but I – didn't take a stroke when I lost my ball and you know what I mean? Like everybody plays it differently. So you never really truly know how good a golfer is until you play with them. A lot yeah. of breakfast balls and foot wedges. And those, exactly. Those games, yeah. right? that, uh, exactly. That do it. Well, well, thank you so much, uh, Adam, for doing this, especially on an off day for you guys. Well-deserved. Um, and uh, really enjoy getting to know you a little better in your path here. And uh, um, looking forward to catching you in the rink uh, tomorrow. 
Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.